Uh, I just, he just published my, uh, my first book. It's called A Frayage of Memory. So I have copies uh, for $8. Um, but yeah, I'll start reading uh, from this, and then I'll go to some newer stuff. Uh, but I'm going to start with a poem called My Father Was a Beekeeper. I always knew my father was allergic to bees, but it wasn't until his obituary I learned he was once a beekeeper. In those days, I hear, he prayed to his veil, only to reemerge hours later, having danced with God under every umber swarm. He was a gifted storyteller, but it wasn't until his stroke at 74 made me listen, when his mouth betrayed his brain. In his final years, he would repeat, the end of bees is the end of man. So, heaven in the soft petals scattered in the grass. Young violets lined his coffin. All I wanted was to listen to stories he told before, details I had forgotten. Around the cemetery, bees still glissando through gardens not unlike the ones he dug into his blackened fingernails. Honey and sweat, story pollinated requiems, harmonies heard in bountiful fields of bloodroot. Thank you. Uh, this poem's called Gate C-55. Waiting in the airport, and the ceiling fluorescents are arranged like a runway askance, and I know I am running from what cannot be salvaged. A week ago, we soared through the sky with all parts intact and fully functional. I didn't need to look out deep, endless windows of fields and plain paved paths and houses and wonder where I belonged, how an engine could so quickly find fault, how its parts could rust in her thrust into eternity. We will never have the biology to fly, no matter our construction, no matter the fantasy of the air. And the air is a fantasy. You breathe easy and pure. But the higher you go, the more lungs constrict the heart. And light breathing becomes impossible in the heavy beating that feels like so much excess baggage it will encumber the great invention and bring it tumbling to earth, where we begin and always end, where... In the vast expanse of land I have no choice but to stay bound to, I stare up toward the full, cloudy sky and watch the great, miraculous wings of blackbirds descend slowly on telephone lines beyond reach. To know what I am made of will never be enough. Um, this poem is called Golden Gate. I listened during that foggy morning stroll on the Golden Gate, when you alluded to what it must mean to jump, how it must feel to fall. The foghorn blared every five minutes from some ship we could not find beneath us. We peered our heads over the low railing and inhaled the gray. Red telephones rang in our heads. I can still hear the ringing from the hotel's broken phone. Thin wires dangled into lines on our palms, curved and infinite, an atlas to guide the whispers we kept into our hands at night. I feared faraway screams, or the deafening sound of cymbals, shards of metal launched from the hinges of what was thought secure. I did not expect, in an instant, without percussion, I did not expect the fog, how sterile, like the afterlife, how it turns the familiar into silhouettes to make this any easier. This poem's called Thanksgiving 2015. The turkey was a sacrifice. We dug our fingers through dark meat to retrieve the stuffing, but avoided the controversial topics, the fat on our bones. What bubbled was the broth, salt on stone, and mom drank sparkling juice cocktails, pretended it was wine. Laughter compressed from the mash in our mouths, the soft chew and gravy. How simple it would be to spill grease from the pan over the tablecloth, so temporary. Ten years ago was the last we all celebrated, the last our talking bounced from our mouths, landed softly in our ears. After the funeral, we peeled grapefruit, the rotting bodies blessed white plates for days after the feast, when we gorged enough of ourselves to ask what it is about the lumps in apple pie we savor, when the tartness burrows new holes in our teeth. 
Maybe it's the cutting, dulled knife on pie, and the serving, one piece on porcelain, a fragment, a memory of what it means to be whole. Thank you. Read some uh, random newer poems. Uh, I'm going to set the first couple ones. Uh, I like to write existential food poems. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling a little uh, existential, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this first poem is called SpaghettiOs. <laughs> the bowl is where the howls come from. Woo! <laughs> a broken record werewolf in this microwave boiled tomato red September. I have been trying to form the words to say to you with only a vowel. When you left for some knockoff white hat, greasy chef Boyardee, I went to the zoo to study manatees, but they too are a migratory species. I saw the first of its kind take on a mangrove, but emerge fish in mouth. She floated to her friend, or brother, or lover, and squealed the syllables until the other swam away. I guess no one communicates with each other the proper way anymore. All these sounds, these oohs and ohs, processed, uneaten. Yeah. And this poem's called Breakfast. I forgot about the Honey Nut Cheerios I left on the counter in the kitchen. Brought it to my room after my coffee, grain soggy, milk sweet. Tried eating it anyway, but fell apart in sugary disintegration. So I gave up. That's usually what happens. A few bites and that's enough. I let it sit, let it warm in the morning's cool, gradual rise to afternoon heat, thinking about the satisfying crunch it should give me, how I could have clamored for seconds. I caress the silver spoon in deep to slow splash and clank. This is what it becomes, a pool of not good enough, and I can't will myself to lift the ceramic altar to my lips to drink. I stare at bottomless milk and know I live somewhere drowning in this disappointment, treading out to some delicious shore, somewhere only I know how to live. But here's this stale, frothy white, stagnant in my bowl, and me hovering, lamenting, stressing over something <laughs> fixable. <laughs> Uh, this one's called uh, Space Junk. After the breakup, our phone conversations become space debris, steel pieces hardly discernible, hurtling haphazardly at five miles per second. Where do the scraps go? The gold taste of summer will impact the brain and puncture in flame. We wish to assist the startups who seek to construct machines to eliminate wayward stairs of satellites trapped in the gravity of a body, propel its dust into the atmosphere to burn. We drift wary of small artifacts from failed missions to emerge in the distance of night to strike and to make split into fragments we will never assemble again. This poem's called Jazz. I usually love a surprise. Trombone slides and stabs, trumpets looking at forgiveness, solos, flutes, side of the sky, detuned. We talked about depression. The sax blew music from your mouth. It was only one time we walked my dog together, his tongue hanging from his mouth like it meant he was happy or something, but he was on Ativan, like us. <laughs> <laughs> only once the leash tore off. You know, when someone plays a B-sharp, when they need a B-flat most, people do not notice music filling their brains, but one time he bled traffic. Everyone heard him flat, that's all it takes. I never thought my timing was ever that great. We tapped our feet when the truck, red as war, sped off for not wanting to look. But everyone around us wanted us to perform flawless, like we knew what to do when we didn't. How much time been up there for nine minutes, so you got about a minute. This poem's called Percussion Swimming. 
We are rhythms, a rattle of bones, arms the wind at war, zagging to the blue of chlorine finish. When the water triangles, crystal bewilderment, when you don't know how to breathe, or won't, you know the sound, the way words drown, and worlds, the beat and absence of universe, submerged in how to get away. This poem's called Fast Love. We ran headfirst into love, bricks, stone, cement, and blood. No glass in that window heart, the rhino's horn, sharp and rare. I write about what's not there, headlights, fog lights. I write to explain this love, this fast love, this rabbit run hole, deep dug, and shovels, and shoulders, and salty skin drowned in tongue. Somewhere over this hill is a burial plot with our names on it. X marks our naked bodies, drunk on desire and gin, and no one knows where our mouths have been. So restore the reservoirs, reserve a seat for me at the theater, let's sit in darkness, watch the actors eat rare steak, and show love without talking about it. Oh, how to enjoy your teeth sunk in blood. Oh, how to finish what you started. This poem's called It's Getting Cold, and uh, it was inspired by Frank O'Hara. I often do not know what to say. Last night, in the air of an autumn thunderstorm, while we aired our differences trying to understand one another, it was our heat kept us tucked together in the sheets. But isn't it unusual how you say you are more like fire, and I am more like water, but how love cannot have one without the other? We should die bite by bite every time my lips find the fruit of yours. I'm telling you, lay with me a little longer. Keep the blanket near and stay to stoke the flame. This poem's called Forsythia. The days when we would lay on blue towels by the beach, combing through our Merriam-Webster, holding every fascinating word by the stems in our mouths. Our vibrancy was inseparable from gardens full of hyacinths and rhododendron and zinnias, and yes, forsythias. All these flowers in our hometowns we never knew the names of, until we saw the words on sand-shorn pages, said the names out loud, grasped endlessly for petals in each other. No, we bloomed laughter from our throats, planted seeds into pits where absence grows in ensuing Aprils. We never knew what words might appear on Scrabble nights, hunched over grids of possibility and strings of letters string surprising words together. Marionettes, spiderwebs, violins, shoelaces. Your hair among the rules of nature and a nurture, here nurturing the garden, here the home where we tend other flowers. All my love, I repeated, for Scythia, for Scythia, for Scythia. But those beach days were distant, the tide slurring softly alongside my returns from long, unexplainable work days. All my love, I repeated, for Cynthia. Wooden tiles tornado to the floor, slapping the carpet with words we had not invented yet. There is no remedy for lost trust. The flame already sleeps in the bed of the mouth. Cynthia, Cynthia. I did not know a Cynthia, but I had never been able to name a Forsythia in the wild. The next time I see one will feel like cheating. Nothing too known is magical. There is wonder in inventing nomenclature, that a word like Forsythia can only be made in moments like anesthesia, with darkness descending like the cigarette clouds of a severe storm when, in the drift into a new consciousness, a lilac floats your mind's pond. A lilac, maybe, though that's not what you want. And maybe, in the distance, you see the blossoming yellow that accompanies spring, the air golden around it, the beauty that's grander than words. You wish you never learned the name for it. I'll finish off with a couple in...
Um, this one is called uh, Drunken Rambling on the Coast. A former friend said to me, I'm jealous of your whimsical life. I haven't stopped drinking since I was in a hotel room with his wife, my feet kneading red chalk-like carpet, their honeymoon's pal a dim amber light. She said, you need vitamin D, sunshine. I made a habit of overdosing on the sun. Tell me again what I need. I had yet to unpeel friendship's pear with my lips and sink. I danced with her months before at the Viper Room, my shirt half clipped. I could not stop thinking about how we might fit under the drunken moon, her candles, the flares, and the darkening, a wax trickling with no end, the rose-like incense rotting the room. I read an article claiming that accessing a memory is like saving a JPEG. Each time you remember, the image pixelates a little more until it blurs beyond recognition. It was dark when it happened. We were drinking. Streetlights cast orange bars on the bed through window blinds while we slipped hungrily from existence. Her face was a spade, but we felt like the garden, digging deeply into ourselves until we became an open cemetery. I drink screwdrivers to feel the acid on my tongue, feeling better since fleeing to the bay's foggy shores. I make stops to study the water at each chilly beach, every heave of the tide as clear as the last, and is frenzied. Her arm reaches into the sand, closer and closer to pull me in, have one last good look at me to ensure I disappear, if I'm not already gone. I have my flask, the sunset, miles of winding road, memories to fade, to make, to fade. Thank you.